Hello and welcome to Things You Didn't Know. I'm Stan Hitchens. And I'm also Stan Hitchens. And today we are in Wallingford, Nether Providence, Pennsylvania. I'm standing here in front of Avondale, the Thomas Sleeper House, here on the banks of the Crumb Creek in Wallingford, Nether Providence, Pennsylvania. Thomas Sleeper was an influential Philadelphia businessman, patriot, and politician. He was the friends of the likes of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison. Leeper originally came to the colonies in 1763, landing in Virginia, meeting his brother who was involved in the tobacco trade. Several years later, Leeper himself moved to Philadelphia where he opened up a successful tobacco distribution business. When the Revolutionary War first broke out, Thomas Leeper helped form the first city troop of light cavalry, fought in a number of battles, served as an officer, and was in George Washington's own personal guard. In 1780, Thomas Leeper decided to purchase a number of mills along the Crumb Creek. He set those mills to producing tobacco products. One of those products was snuff. You may have watched movies of the 1700s where a gentleman opens up a little container, takes a pinch of a powder, and <laughs> sniffs it up his nose. Well, that's snuff. And it was very popular in the 1700s, and Leeper became very wealthy producing this product. These mills, combined with his tobacco distribution business in Philadelphia, made Leeper very wealthy, and he decided to diversify even more. All around this area, there were granite quarries. He purchased a number of granite quarries because Philadelphia, the fastest growing city in the country at the time, was in great demand for building materials, and granite was one of those products and Leeper decided to buy quarries to supply that demand. So, Thomas Leeper ran into a problem here. He had to get all of his granite rocks, his heavy duty rocks from his quarry, 10 miles upstream to the Philadelphia marketplace via the Delaware River. But back then, all they had were these crude dirt roads that when it would start raining, would turn into these muddy quagmires. So, he had a problem here. What was he to do? So, what does Thomas Leeper decide to do? He decides to build a canal between Crumb Creek and Ridley Creek because you could not float barges on top of Crumb Creek. However, you could float barges on top of Ridley Creek, which is very important to get it up through the Delaware to Philadelphia, 10 miles upstream, so we can get to the marketplace. Well, sounds like a great idea, right? Well, not so fast. Unfortunately, many of the mill owners protested and they thought it would adversely affect their business because it could possibly affect the flow to their mill races. So, unfortunately, Pennsylvania came in here and shut down his entire operation. So, what does he do next? So here's what Thomas Leeper decided to do. From the quarry bluffs that you see behind me today is about three quarters of a mile, as the crow flies, directly to Ridley Creek. So Thomas Leeper in 1809 decided that he was going to build a tramway where we're a sort of a rudimentary railroad that could carry the granite to Ridley Creek. An oxen could pull a rail car over iron rails laid on wooden ties three quarters of a mile to the Ridley Creek, where the granite could be offloaded onto barges. The barges then could be floated down to the Delaware River and then up the Delaware River to Philadelphia to market. Pretty good idea. Where I'm standing right now is the top of the Leaper Quarry Bluff, the spot where the railway started its run, its three quarters of a mile run, to the Ridley Creek. As you can see today, it's a present day Nether Providence residential neighborhood that was built in the 1950s. But in 1810, when the railway started, it ran and it ferried granite to Ridley Creek up until 1828. At that time, the Leeper family got the uh, permission to finally build their canal and replace their railroad with a canal, which I think is the first time in U.S. history that a canal replaced a railroad. So the Leeper family then sold their rights to that railroad, that spur, to the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. At the time, it was known as the Philadelphia and Ohio Railroad. Baltimore and Ohio, otherwise known as the B&O, ran the Crumb Creek branch or spur of their line clear up into the 1950s. Now, the Leeper Railway was not the first tramway in the United States. That goes to an earlier project in upstate New York 
and another earlier project in Boston. However, they were just temporary contraptions that were just there for occasional temporary use. However, the Leaper Railroad was the first permanent railroad in the United States that continuously operated and was chartered and used every day for business and so forth. That's why it's such an important, iconic landmark in history. So Stan, did you know that that first tramway in New upstate New York was built by Captain John Montressor of the English Army? The same John Montressor that built Fort Mifflin and then later laid siege to it? Wow, I did not know that fact. That's true, but that's a story for another time. Here we are, tucked away on the banks of the Crumb Creek in Nether Providence, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, the site of the first railroad in the United States of America and North America, thanks to a great American, Thomas Sleeper. I'm Stan Hitchens. And so am I, and you've been watching Things You Didn't Know. Now, the Leaper Railway was not the first tramway in the United States. That goes to an earlier project in upstate New York. Did I say permanent again? Fudge. Do it again. Do it again. I know, I know, but I want to say.